I first met Nick uh, at university. He's always been supportive of me, whether it's getting through a mechanical engineering exam or, um, you know, going windsurfing and sort of helping, you know, he, he, he is, he's someone that helps out and, uh, and supports people. He was one of the more gregarious members of the, of the course. Um, he used to do things like turning up to, to work in battered clothes and flip-flops and uh, he was in the OTC. The Officer Training Corps was, was founded um, just a hundred years ago uh, and in that last hundred years a remarkable number of sort of very gallant and brave things have been done by our former officer cadets. He then um, moved on, went to Sandhurst. Nick came to us uh, in, in my flight as already a sort of honour winner from Sandhurst, so he was basically the number one cadet at Sandhurst. He then went on in the Army Air Corps to win what's called the Stockwell Sword, which is awarded to the best officer within the Army Air Corps. He embarked really on a, quite a, a long period of training, um, 18 months or so, I, I believe, of training, um, to become a, a helicopter pilot. And sort of during that time, he, he was selected through to, to, to go into the Apache. It's a 38 million pound helicopter, um, you know, of which uh, there are eight in a squadron. Um, each pilot quoted is apparently worth eight million pounds because of the training invested in him. It's a sort of the most state of art helicopter in the world. And generally, those sort of picked to fly are inherently the, sort of the top pilots. Everybody else who'd undertook the course had flown an operational type beforehand. Uh, but Nick had come straight from his pilot training onto the course, which was, um, and he was, he was the only member of the squadron to do that. He was under a lot of pressure to do well. He was basically the guinea pig for the whole program to see if he can do it, can, can allow a lot of, you know, can new pilots go straight onto this aircraft type. He rapidly assimilated the knowledge and he was, he was clearly very able to deal with the sort of demanding aircraft that it was. He went to Afghanistan three times. It was Christmas Eve actually uh, in 2006. Uh, and Nick was flying in support of some ground troops who were operating in uh, the Helmand province of Afghanistan. And the, uh, there was himself and another aircraft who were both giving support to the troops on the ground. But Nick was in charge of the aircraft during the day mission and their aircraft came under quite a lot of uh, fire. So they were basically shot at from the ground, took a lot of damage to the aircraft which caused a lot of alarm bells and whistles to go off inside the cockpit. Generally most people would have, would have probably turned home and gone back to base at that point. And although he had significant damage to the aircraft he chose to stay in the air above the troops on the ground so that they could actually attack that machine gun uh, and destroy it such that the guys on the ground could, uh, could carry on with their, with their, their fight and, and win, the, win the day. And the sort of characteristics uh, that he had to show were, were bravery, courage, above all judgment. Nick was awarded the, uh, the Distinguished Flying Cross or the DFC as it's known. Well the Distinguished F uh, Flying Cross is a gallantry award that is uh, awarded uh, for gallantry in the face of an enemy and it is a parallel and equal award to the, that of a military cross or a distinguished service cross. Disregarding his own safety and, and I think also very importantly uh, taking the decision also to endanger that of his crewman in the helicopter and also order his wingman aircraft uh, into a firing position. He continued to give that support to the soldiers on the ground allowing them to extract uh, safely and only when they were able to do so uh, did he recover his aircraft and fly it back on one engine, thereby safeguarding a very valuable aircraft, uh, preserving the life of those soldiers on the ground and taking the responsibility of those airmen in the air with him. Uh, a very brave act indeed. I'd say he has just boundless and limitless energy and enthusiasm. Nick has a lust for life um, and I think he probably lives his lives his life by the motto that he should never waste a day. Um, you'll always find Nick with some kind of sport plan or uh, some way of having fun. He doesn't, he's not one for sitting around doing nothing. A good analogy of Nick Barton is if you imagine a laser pointer you'd use in a presentation and the dot it would create around the room, then bringing a spaniel into the picture, that is Nick. Nick, is, Nick will chase that laser spot around and that's, that sums him up perfectly of the most you know, enthusiastic, likeable character who just, you know, you could easily distract him with a laser dot. I mean, he's, he's very sort of excitable. Um, great guy. I think I need to get my own back on um, some of uh, the hoods over on that table there. Um, University of Nottingham, uh, ladies, gents, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm deeply honoured and privileged to come back uh, to Nottingham University, but I haven't been back to for far too long. Uh, and you'll be pleased to know it's looking better, far better, than when I was here eight, eight years ago. It looks very impressive. Uh, so thank you, and I'm very honoured to receive this award tonight. Um,
there's a fair amount of thanks that needs to go out. I think Joe Dunn and her team uh, for uh, sending the media crew out to find all those relevant hoods, friends of mine, uh, and the various photos. Um, thank you, Joe. Uh, ben, for nominating me. Uh, I think you knew that these guys might stitch me up. Um, I'm sh sure that you, you, know, you don't know too much of, of the story, but um, thank you. Uh, Pete, Simon. Uh, Peter is also in the military. Uh, I don't think his military uniform fits in him, in him anymore, <laughs> and hence why he's in a DJ. Uh, Peter uh, is very tall. Stand up, Pete, actually. <laughs> it's also his birthday tonight. <laughs> Happy birthday, Peter. Thank you. Um, Pete, happy birthday. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. He's taught me a lot of what I know, um, although he's probably more funny than me most of the time. Um, in fact, all the time. Uh, Simon, who uh, I've shared a house with for three or four years uh, and had immense fun, uh, used to be an army officer, used to be a very smart army officer. He used to wear bow ties, but a self tie. Uh, tonight, I don't think he is. Simon, are you? But did you manage to buy an emergency self-tie bow tie? I did. You did? Oh, okay. Oh, it's stitched. Um, uh, yeah, I feel very honoured. I've had, I'm clearly in the military. I'm the only one in uniform tonight. Uh, I think I stand out slightly. Uh, just a little bit. It still va vaguely fits me from, you know, however, eight years ago at Santos. Uh, and I've had a pretty rewarding time. A lot of skills uh, that I have developed at university, I suppose, um, and learn, I, you know, you grow at university in whichever field that you want to be. I don't think I was uh, attending quite as many lectures as Mr. Ben Scott or Dr. Tom Baker over there. They were much keener than I was. Uh, I liked the extracurricular activities. Um, and when on, I've had, it's not many careers, but they let you fly a pretty amazing aircraft and teach you to fly. I've had a few experiences. Um, I. Yeah, I'm not sure that, um, you know, I'm pretty humbled by it all and I think a lot of it, you were just doing your job. Uh, I've had 14 months in Afghanistan over the last sort of two and a half years uh, and as Pete sort of said, I was unlucky enough to get shot at on Christmas Eve um, and that's a bit of a shock to the system. Actually, it's more like a sledgehammer um, just underneath your seat. Um, but the training sort of kicks in. Actually, it doesn't actually. It's... Um, uh, you, your first reaction is normally to swear, uh, and I don't swear very often, so, um, so and, and I think both of us did, and then the training kicks in and you start going through the drills and the aircraft is okay. Uh, so I was pretty lucky, we had a few systems and faults, um, I'm not sure, it, you know, it, uh, uh, I was yeah, humbled by it being written up by my uh, commanding officer, um, uh, I think. Um, the current ground troops going out there face a pretty incredible challenge with the improvised explosive devices uh, and unknown uh, response from local nationals. So we are in a great aircraft, uh, yes we get shot out a little bit, uh, but we can shoot back so um, in some sense that's okay. Um, tonight thank you very much uh, um, my friends and family for coming up supporting me and stitching me up, Joe for organising, uh, I'm deeply honoured to receive this award, thank you.